one story. Different angles. Perspectives. Jerusalem is cloaked in a shroud of menace and violence as relations between Israel and the Palestinians spiral out of control. In the West Bank, protest is the daily bread and a third intifada is brewing. Russia 24 reports. The recent stabbings of Israeli police, soldiers, border guards and civilians has left many injured. However, things are taking a more sinister turn. In East Jerusalem, a group of Palestinian gunmen attacked a bus. They wanted to massacre the passengers. Those that attacked the bus came from the volatile Jabal Mukabar area. It has a history of instability. The assailants were armed with pistols. They were waiting at the bus stop. When the doors opened, they opened fire. The driver suffered stab wounds. Another attacker entered from the back door and started shooting. It lasted a minute and a half. I always use the bus, but today I missed it by a few seconds. The bus had left, then it stopped. The driver, one of my relatives, got out and shouted, Terrorist! Terrorist! I took cover. The terrorist continued to shoot. The police arrived within two minutes and fired at the attackers. One was killed, the second wounded. Two people were dead on the bus and 15 injured, some seriously. In the Jerusalem police headquarters, another attack is reported. A man working for a communications company drives a car into a bus stop. He jumps from the car brandishing a cleaver and attacks those at the stop. A plainclothes policeman shot him. The people crowded round and wanted to lynch him. In the Israeli town of Ranana, the police have been told to shoot if they see anything suspicious. Our police are working hard and we will kill terrorists. Every terrorist who takes a knife and tries to stab a police officer or a soldier or a member of the public, we kill them. This footage was taken close to the Shechem gate in the old city. A police patrol spots a suspicious man and decides to check his papers. The suspect drew a knife and hit the policeman in the chest, but he was wearing a protective vest. The police then let off a dozen rounds. The man killed on the spot. The authorities sent 2,000 officers into the city and for the first time called up police reservists. It's done nothing to ease the tension. The Palestinians called for a day of rage and a general strike. The strikes are to defend our religion, our Al-Aqsa, that the Israelis want to take. The current violence shows no sign of ending and it's being talked of as the third intifada as the peace process remains stalled. Jewish settlements continue to spread and the prospect of a Palestinian state is as far away as ever. A case of putting out fire with gasoline. The politicians play the blame game and the situation deteriorates. The number of dead mount and grief turns to anger. Distrust is everywhere. Spain's TVE filed this report. The president of the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas, has called for calm and requested peaceful resistance to the occupation. The Palestinian president did not explicitly condemn the violence, 
but he's trying to stand back from the latest attacks. And he accused Israel of being responsible for the deterioration in the situation by attempting to violate the status quo of Jerusalem, which has been in place since 1967 after the Six-Day War. It states Muslims pray in the Al-Aqsa compound and Jews pray at the Wailing Wall. The Palestinians accuse the Israeli government of permitting Jewish settlers to pray in the compound in order to take over the holy site. The Palestinian president has requested help from the international community to protect the sacred place, which he believes is under attack from Israel. There is always violence, and the number of dead and injured is on the rise. Police surround the central bus station in Jerusalem. A Palestinian has just stabbed an Israeli woman. The attacker is dead and the police are on the hunt for accomplices. A group of girls shout, terrorist, terrorist. I saw an Arab man running. He was then shot. Death to Arabs, chant a group of young Jews. A fresh attack is reported just hours after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has announced a package of security measures such as security personnel on public transport, checkpoints in and out of Arab East Jerusalem, seizure and destruction of property, and Israel's threat not to return corpses to prevent funerals becoming politicized. It's not just Jerusalem. The clashes have spread across the occupied territories, particularly in Bethlehem and Hebron, with dozens injured. The spate of indiscriminate stabbings of Israelis by Palestinians is the latest twist in a history of unremitting animosity and brutality. The phenomenon has no face, no leader, and is driven by religion and social media. At 16, Isaac was an everyday student living on the outskirts of Ramallah. Then out of the blue, the teenager armed himself with a knife and attacked two Orthodox Jews in Jerusalem. He was shot dead by police. He was a quiet boy, no histrionics. I've never encouraged this kind of behavior. But today the Jews are on the compound of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Why give cause? You see what happens. The grief-stricken man is struggling to understand. Isaac is a hero to his friends. I was surprised he did something so brave. Only heroes do such things. He urged us to go and pray at the mosque with him. He was always talking about Al-Aqsa. He told us it's at the heart of the Palestinian struggle. Today's young Palestinians need no spiritual leaders. Ideology is communicated via social media. The violence is followed live and propaganda is everywhere. Isaac may have fallen under the influence of a group which encourages knife attacks on Israelis. Young people attach great importance to sacred places where they are free from intimidation from the Jewish community and they're prepared to defend them. Israel is on the back foot against a determined and dangerous threat that has no real organization or structure.